Hello, my name is Enrique Arriaga. I'm the machine learning leader at Stroli Inc. in Kyoto, Japan. And I will talk about the automatic georeferencing of map images using unsupervised learning and graph analysis. Georeferencing means assigning real world coordinates to each pixel of a raster image. This is usually done creating matches of X and Y in the raster image to the latitude and longitude of the location of NERF it is depicting. Each one of these matches is called ground control points or GCP. With a series of GCP, a transformation can be calculated to obtain the bounding box depicted by the map. In this paper, we present a novel method to automatically georeference digitized maps. This method is designed to work with maps with different scale, different art style, and basically depicting any place on Earth. The main advantage is that the only input from the user is the raster image because it doesn't require any additional hint or metadata. At the same time, the method is also highly tolerant to rotation, distortion, or even to projections. The process of manually georeferencing images can be difficult and time consuming. At the same time, the level of understanding and knowledge to do it correctly can be rather daunting. In the last few decades, there have been several advances towards the automatic georeferencing of map images or even photographs. However, these methods are usually focused on a single map style, a single map projection, or a single geographical area. Uh, also, sometimes they do require access to additional databases that may be difficult to obtain. In the method proposed in this paper, we have three main steps. In the first step, we obtain a list of candidate or preliminary ground control points. This is done by obtaining text annotation of the map using OCR and then querying each one of them in a geocoding service. The idea behind this is that some of the lines of text will include the name of locations on Earth. If that is the case, the geocoding service will return the latitude and longitude of such location, like the examples in the top right. However, there will be certainly spurious or incorrect results, like the examples in the bottom right. And these are usually caused by OCR or geocoding errors, but especially because of the natural ambiguity of location names. And that is why we call them candidates at this point. In the second step, we calculate the geometric relationship between each pair of candidates. We calculate the Euclidean distances and angles in the raster image and also in the projected coordinate system. And then we join these results to obtain these multidimensional distances for each pair. Agglomerative clustering is used to obtain clusters of distances with low variance in all the dimensions. And we can also create this non-directed graph like the one in the top right. Using graph analysis, we can obtain the maximum click or fully connected graph of this GCP. Remember that each one contains at the same time X, Y, latitude and longitude. And we also mentioned at the beginning that with a series of GCP, a bounding box can be calculated. And that is exactly the goal of the third and final step. And at the same time is the result of the system. Experimentally, we have found that larger clicks with lower variance increase the chance of having found the correct georeference information. And for these experimental results, we use a data set of 359 map images that were manually georeferenced by a human expert. And we use this as the ground truth. Then we calculate the IOU between this bounding box and the predicted by the algorithm. And we use a threshold of 0.2. In this table, we can see the results of executing the method four times. And each time we change the one of the main hyperparameters, which is the minimum accepted size of the click of GCP to be considered a successful one. Uh, we can see this trade-off between precision and recall. As we increase the size, the precision grows from 81 to almost 98%, but at the same time, the recall decreases from 71 to only 55. Here we can visualize some of the results and we can compare the predicted area in orange 
with the ground truth, which is plotted in Bloom. Finally, we believe this method could be applied for large map collections, such as the one present in museums and universities, in a very time and resource efficient way. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.